Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to all of you out there. I am Madam Yusna Liza and today's presentation is on MFRS 116 Property Plan and Equipment. We are already in part C of the presentation um, and this is the fifth video. And in this uh, fifth session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the uh, uh, subsequent costs which is under the property plan and equipment. So let's look at the lesson outcome for today's um, session, which is uh, the one that I've highlighted here. That is to explain accounting entries for subsequent costs, the presentation and disclosure in the financial statement. So subsequent costs. What is subsequent costs? It is the further costs incurred meaning that after the initial recognition or after the date of purchase, there are costs that you have to incur over the useful life of the asset. Here is the PPE. So whatever cost that you need to incur after the date of acquisition, and let's say after the date of acquisition, after that, up until the, the end of the useful life, let's say the useful life is 10 years. Whatever cost incurred throughout this 10 years period, right, is actually the uh, subsequent expenditure or subsequent costs. So what are the examples of them? It's repair and maintenance, for example, the one done for building, for the elevator, for the escalator, or replacement parts or components uh, that is done for perhaps for the uh, machine or for maybe motor vehicles where engine are being rep uh, replaced, uh, certain components are being uh, replaced to get a better one. Expenditure incurred to improve the performance of the asset, to improve the capacity of the asset or the uh, uh, expenditure incurred to improve the quality of the asset, right? Let's say to improve machines, uh, our capacity. Renovation costs that will normally uh, give the impact of the storage, more storage uh, and renovation costs will also be able to um, improve capacity of the uh, report, the asset of the entity where that is applicable. Cleaning costs, this is normally to clean, let's say, the building or the, uh, the um, perhaps uh, the bus, the uh, whatever transportation uh, means that you have or any other asset, right? Repainting cost of building, repainting cost of uh, cars, uh, repainting cost of vans. These are repainting costs that would uh, also be incurred over the life of the asset. And major inspection costs for airplanes, for example, this is very crucial issue for ships and other uh, assets that need to be taken care in terms of the safety, uh, most uh, importantly. Next is what is actually the accounting issue with regards to subsequent costs. So the issue is shall the reporting entity charge that as an expense and show them in the SOPL or shall that be included as part of the cost of the PPE added to the cost of the PPE if the cost before that was 100000 and you have incurred subsequent cost of 10,000, shall that 10,000 be added? That is the issue. Should it be added to the cost of the PPE or should it just be expense of in the year incurred? And let's say we take an example of the service and maintenance cost here that was incurred for the motor vehicle. For the motor vehicles, the issue is to charge as an expense or not or if it's not shall we charge that as to be included as part of the cost of the PPE so repairs for example repairs of the car the, exam, uh, the MFRS 116 provide guideline on what are the costs that should be added to the uh, PPE these are some of the examples given and in the MFRS where 
cost should be added if that has cost extension to the estimated useful life or maybe increase in the output increase in the quantity of the output quantity yeah, or capacity basically substantial improvement in the quality no increase in the output but it's the improvement in the quality the Q word there is improve and the uh, significant reduction in the previously assessed operating cost maybe you can cut down the operating cost significantly by the uh, expenditure being incurred for that particular um, PPE so we have to see what are the nature and these are some of the guidelines given and uh, counting treatment as I said either to uh, add to the cost this is regarded as being treated as capital expenditure so if it's to be charged as an expense this will be revenue expenditure which is day-to-day -day, uh, expenditure that is incurred over the uh, management of the business to treat as capital expenditure why for example if the cost incurred as I mentioned earlier will enhance the future economic benefits the features of the asset the function of the asset the the asset here refers to the existing PPE before the um, subsequent cost and after the subsequent cost it has increased the future economic benefits beyond the originally assessed standard so the standard has now improved in terms of performance and condition so if that is the case it should be capitalized capitalized mean to add or included as part of the cost of the PPE next is the accounting treatment for capital expenditure we shall look at this example one which is about a company called Gajus Berhad and the year end is 30th of June 2006 uh, the company provides uh, courier services and they now incur the cost of 60,000 to renovate the building so renovation of the building where the renovation will be able to cater for the need of increased storage for meals and parcel so there is need for that and renovation will be able to provide more spaces for this operation and therefore there will be more delivery being done because there are more meals and parcels uh, can be stored in the company so that will generate future economic benefits by way of the service revenue so that is the situation and advise the company on the accounting treatment advice should be what you have uh, to write and that should be in the light of MFRS 116 um, guidance and this is to advise what should be done with the renovation costs in terms of accounting treatment so the advice to advise the company on the accounting treatment before we give the advice the renovation is regarded as cap capital expenditure yes because it will provide space to the company and it will improve the capacity of the building and therefore in terms of journal entry this is going to be added to the building added means you are going to debit the building with 60,000 and this will be credited to the bank or to the payable 60,000 so when you do this this is what we meant by being added to the cost of the building let's say before that the building has a cost of uh, let's say uh, 800,000 so now with the addition of 60,000 it will be 860 and that is being added to the cost of the building initially um, renovation has enhanced the value so this is actually providing reason why you say it is treated as capital expenditure these are the reason it can enhance the value of the building by providing more spaces and because of that uh, that has increased the future economic benefits of the 
building beyond its originally assessed standards because there are more storage being provided now. Therefore, you need to make a conclusion. This cost should be capitalized as part of the cost of the building. So if you were to imagine the statement of financial position under the non-current asset by the end of that particular year, there will be a PPE and this PPE shall add the 60,000 here. So if my example earlier I put 800, now it becomes 860 because 800 plus 60. So 860 means the cost is being capitalized as part of the cost of the PPE. Next is uh, the next uh, option. Should we treat the subsequent cost as capital expenditure? That was the case. Example that has been given. And now is to treat as revenue expenditure. What is the situation? Normally, these are being treated as uh, revenue expenditure. If that is just incur being incurred to maintain the current level of the future economic benefit to maintain. And that is not trying to improve further the working condition or trying to improve the capacity. It was just to ensure that the PPE will be in proper working condition. So it's normally not to improve significantly or enhance the future economic benefits. It was just to maintain the a good condition of the uh, property plan and equipment so that it is still in the uh, intended use or proper working condition so that shall not be included in the cost of the PVE shall be excluded don't go and add to the building for example uh, if that is related to maintenance of the building so that shouldn't be added it should be expense off to the profit or loss in the year incurred so that was the guidance of MFRS 116 and here is example 2 to illustrate that is the company that still provide the uh, delivery service where the van is the asset and it was used to deliver the documents and parcels and the van now incurred some service and maintenance costs to maintain the van you may have to send for service send for repair or whatever a replacement accessory for the so-called van right so which is just to incur the maintenance cost of the uh, maintenance cost 2500 to maintain the the working condition of the van, uh, the van and the question is explain the accounting treatment before I explain the accounting treatment in terms of what you see here it is just to maintain. Maintain means it will not improve or enhance the working condition or the performance beyond the existing capacity. So this is the van. So uh, therefore the service and maintenance was just incurred that the amount was how much just now? 2,500 was just incurred to um, without enhancing the performance or function of the van the van sorry so that was just uh, to ensure the van is in proper working order so it will be treated as revenue expenditure in terms of journal entry accounting entries that will be debited to service and maintenance and that will be 2500 debit and this will be shown or reported in the current year statement of profit or loss and it will be credited to the bank if it's an accrued expenses it will be credited to the accrued service and maintenance and here means this is actually being excluded from the cost of the PPE so meaning to say that in the statement of profit or loss that will be shown under expenses admin expenses and that admin expenses that we have already uh, calculated just now was 2005 it would be the service and maintenance costs right that is what happened 
and therefore service and maintenance costs should not be ex, uh, included from in the in initial cost which means that it is excluded but must be recognized in the statement of profit or loss as expense in the year incurred so there is no addition to the uh, to the uh, van uh, to add to the van or to debit to the van or motor vehicles account. These are some summary of uh, this uh, subsequent cost or subsequent expenditure. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the most important question is that whether the further cost incurred um, over the useful life will it significantly enhance or not the future economic benefits? If yes, it will be capitalized. If no, it is just to maintain the current level of the uh, the uh, PPE. You are just going to treat it as capital expenditure, and because of that, it will not be capitalized. And here, it is capitalized. Capitalized means it becomes part of the cost. It is being included. The reason, as I have discussed earlier. And that is only if that can significantly enhance the future economic benefits beyond the existing standards of performance or the existing condition. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And um, I, I thank you for watching. With that, I'll see you and I will see you. Assalamualaikum and have a pleasant day ahead.